Hello and welcome to The Fourth Wave, a podcast named after the fourth wave of feminism that aims to inspire, empower, inform, and celebrate the woman of today. Each episode, we will give you strategies and ideas for living a life as your most empowered self. This week, we will talk about the importance of prioritizing your needs, the pressures of aging, and a self-empowerment booster tip that always leaves us feeling powerful and able to take on the day. I'm Mirtha Michelle, a best-selling author and poet. I am your host and co-founder of The Fourth Wave, and I'm here in Los Angeles with my co-founder and best friend, Jamie Barada. That's me, Jamie Barada, an entertainment and fashion attorney living in Los Angeles. So... As you guys know by now, we like to start off our show by sharing strategies that help us feel a sense of empowerment in our daily lives, things that work for us and that we hope can work for you too. And we love it most when these strategies and tips actually come from our listeners. So please, please write to us with what works for you because it makes it so much more fun when we get to share those um tips and strategies with our other listeners. You can DM us on Instagram or leave us a comment at the Ivy Wave and same goes for Twitter. This week our try this at home as we like to call it has to do with prioritizing yourself and your own needs. So it's very simple and I picked this one up from a therapist of mine. Not I don't have many but I mean my the therapist I go to at times and um, okay, here's the thing. So Jamie's laughing because she's looking at me and I'm, I have this little smirk on my face <laughs> so, because I am a believer, a strong believer in prioritizing yourself. Right. But in some of us, um, you actually have to think about it, tell yourself to do it. Your day is about other people, or maybe you just go straight to work and then your day becomes about your clients or whatever it is. So Yes, this is uh, for those that m- it might not come as naturally to them to prioritize themselves, right? So your right? therapist suggested? She suggested write down, every day, write down three things that are just for you, just about you, um, and knock those things off your list each day. And they can be, you know, super small, um, or something that might take up more time. So it, it doesn't have to be like three huge important things, just okay, three gi- things. Give us, I like this idea. Give us okay. an example. Of okay, three so things. one thing, for example, might be go to the gym. One thing might be, for example, oh, there's that favorite latte that I love at that one coffee spot. Like, I'm going to treat myself today to that. To that. Um, another thing, like that would be for me, maybe getting a little massage, like going to the now and getting a 30 minute massage, even just something that doesn't take up that much time. I, I had a strawberry uh, <laughs> milkshake the other day. Yeah. Was that and one of I yours? felt guilty. I felt, I felt so terrible afterwards because I'm supposed to be on a diet. Mm-hmm. But then when I was talking about it with someone, I said, you know what? I actually really enjoyed having it. Mm-hmm. I was ecstatic. When I was having it. Yeah. That was like my thing that day. Right. So. (laughs) I knocked it off my list, Jamie. So imagine if you just started each day with three and there's, there's something to it. Just a nice feeling of just knowing you're doing something for yourself at the the end of the day that you've done three things for yourself. Or it might not be something like the ones we just shared, maybe it's three things that's going to further a goal of your, a personal goal of yours or a business idea of yours. You know, a lot of times I'll get to the office and one of my things will be like work on the pod, work on this thing, Mm -hmm. this thing for the podcast today. And that's like one of my three because it's just furthering something that in the end is, is more toward more for me, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to do with me serving other people. I mean, clients and stuff like that. Um, So yeah, it's all about being selfish with your day and just making sure that you're carving out time to make your day about yourself and not just about your job or your family members or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. It's also about carving time out for yourself. So let us know if you tried this at home. Start your day off by writing down three things three you things 
for you to check off during the day and let us know if it helps you feel a sense of empowerment in your daily lives. You can get in touch on Twitter. Drop us an email at info at the ivywave.com or go to the ivywave.com for contact info, links, and everything else related to this podcast. Okay, so this week is a topic that I think comes up, um, I was going to say more among women than men, but that's not fair. I think it comes up amongst men and women equally, um, and, and that is with regards to the pressures of aging. Um, and I think, so I think everyone can relate to that. And I think it's especially relevant and even something you feel more when you live in a city like Los Angeles, where... Any major city. Yeah. There's a, where there's more pressure on... Let me tell you, I grew up in Miami mm-hmm. and there was a lot of pressure to, to have Look a, a certain body way. Right. in Miami, especially because it's a beach, beach uh, city. Right, for sure. And... We talked a lot about self-care on our podcast before, and we are huge advocates of that. But I think that this uh, the line of self-care keeps advancing, and it leaves us with this very thin line to walk as in terms of what's, you know, when it comes to chasing the pressures of aging and having to stay up to date with everything that's coming out Um you know, there's so there's everything is out there now today. I, I think w- I think it would be more as to when it when is it enough? Yeah, when or when have you crossed the line a little too much? Right. Or because in my opinion, I feel that a lot of times when people start performing all this um, plastic surgery and all these things, it's like there there's something there's an issue there. Yeah, that's that's not necessarily going to be fixed going to a surgeon. Yeah, and it's there's a lot of pressure of yeah aging. It's and crazy. especially especially because of the world we live in now. Right, the Instagram world, the social media world. Right. I I was I I, I was looking at older pictures um, of me, and I was like, wow. You compare how we used to look 10 years ago with how girls look like now. It's crazy. 17-year-old girls now, just they look like they're 25, 26 years old. Yeah. And they're learning all of this online. Yeah. No, I know. I, I mean, I feel like very lucky that we grew up without all of social media um, and without just everything, we just that have there is. worse pictures to show for. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, where are the teenagers with like the acne and the awkward stages and everything? It's like no, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but but it, yeah, it's there's a lot crazy. of pressure, even uh, with the apps. For example, let's talk a little bit about the apps. Yeah. Facetune. Uh, what are the other app names? Perfect. All, uh, Three, all six, these five. smooth mo- smoothing apps. Yeah. It's like sometimes you see these fifty year old women, and they don't have a wrinkle on mm-hmm. on their pictures because they're using the apps too. <laughs> And um, you can do everything with those. You can apps. do it. It's like your you can eyelashes, yes. your eyes, your nose, your lips, your everything. Um, and so then people get used to that image of themselves, and they want to look like they that. They want to look times. like that in real life. Yeah, it's insane. This stuff actually really interests me because I love, like, I just love reading about beauty products that come out, like. Uh, and just treatments that you can do um but it and it's it's just it's crazy to see how much there is though out there now and you I haven't resorted to those those more extreme things I do love like a facial and a mask and a peel oh I'm all about masks yeah but I I apply masks like I'm surprised that I don't have one right now I know. I thought about we should have oh, totally we should have done worn that. Masks. <laughs> um, no, I'm all about I'm all about masks and 
and taking care of your skin. When you take care of your skin, you you don't even have to apply so much makeup because it's all about healthy, glowy skin. Right. Um, but if but there's a lot of people that they rely on the fillers and the Botox. What do you feel about that, Jamie? I don't to be know. honest, I I. I get Botox. I Mm -hmm. get Botox like maybe once a year. Yeah. I haven't gone overboard with it. I have gotten it. And um, I don't don't know if it's going to harm me down the road since it is poison. Well, that's the thing. So I haven't done it yet, but I'm not against Botox. Um, But that is kind of the thing, especially with filler, that... I I, just I don't, don't think, I don't think I could do the filler thing because that's like same. that's that's adding like another level to your face. Yeah, I uh, and here's the thing: like what you just said, everyone is looking. Well, it is actually really amazing. I've seen some people who they'll get little bits of it, and they it's they so subtle, great. and they look amazing. Um, and then, yeah, you see some people where it's like super scary, you know, and they don't even realize how, because they're looking at their face every day, that they don't even realize how unnatural it's starting to look. But where, that's, that's where my question comes in. Yeah. Where, when is it enough? Yeah. My biggest thing, my biggest problem with it is that it hasn't been around for long enough for us to know where, the true what side it does. Effects. Yeah. And what it does, to, what's your face going to look like in 10 years is is this like side of your cheek going to be like up here and then your other cheek is going to be like, we don't know how that's going to break down uh, in your skin, long-term. In your face. Um, so that's my... But it's not just that. It's also um, not just... Uh, there's also you know, body, body, body uh, plastic surgery. Nowadays, you don't know if... You don't know what's real or not. Right. And I just so it was so my we were, my I have a girlfriend of mine that mm-hmm. she has a great body. Mm-hmm. She works out a lot. You know she she puts in the work at the gym. Mm-hmm. And she was just in Miami for Art Basel, mm-hmm. and she called me and she was like, "Wow, everyone in Miami has like a fake butt." Mm-hmm. I was like. It's crazy, but this is like where the fake butt thing I think is crazy. It's, yeah, because that's the injection, it's dangerous. even just like the injection. So many people have died. Oh, have you seen? Um, there's a new Spike Lee um, show on Netflix called "She's Got to Have It," and it was based off of I think a movie he had done before. But it's um, it's funny because there's this whole storyline about a girl needing feeling like she needed butt injections for her job. She's like. A, a cocktail waitress at a strip club and well, she most, wants to start dancing. Most many women get butt injections because they are trying to fit a mold. Yeah. Uh, to fit a mold, of, you know, for their jobs. Yeah. Whether they're right. exotic dancers or cocktail waitresses. It's, it's a tough business to keep up with. Right. But even girls who aren't in a business that have any, anything to do with it are, are also getting these injections. They're getting and, and they're risking their lives. And that's the craziest one I feel because I think we Some have people get seen, it done like in basements. Right. In and New I York think, City. But with those, we have seen kind of what it looks like. And it does not look very natural, <laughs> those uh, over time. Beauty is an eye of the beholder. But my my thing is more of w- when is it enough that you, you're you doing these things to look better, but in, in actuality, you are risking your health. Right. And um, and I but I always I've never I haven't gone any plastic surgery. I'm not against it. But one thing that I've always believed is that you have to work on yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to work on yourself. You have to love yourself. If you want to tweak something because it'll make you feel better, great. But also know when to stop. Right. Because some people don't stop, and then it just becomes a mental 
you know, it's a, it's like a mental thing. Yeah. No, I'm one thing that I did want to talk about, um, and something that I've been practicing Mm -hmm. as of recent, uh, age regression. Mm -hmm. What's that? The power of the mind is, is amazing. When we buy skincare products that tell you that they're anti-aging, et cetera, all this amazing uh, product. I'm giving you an example. Like, oh, you just bought this product that's saying that you're supposed to look so much better in three weeks, et cetera. This is, it's like the placebo effect. You're mm-hmm. applying something because you think that it's going to make you look younger. Mm-hmm. That it's going to remove wrinkles or soften the wrinkles, right? And you apply it religiously. And every time you apply it in your mind, you are seeing yourself already younger. Mm-hmm. That's age regression. Mm-hmm. Because your mind has so much power. Right. When people are stressed out, when people are unhappy, they age faster. Have you ever noticed how, how fast... Uh, president's age right. when they're in office mm-hmm. because of the amount of stress they, uh, they take on. Yeah. When you live a life that's lighter and happy and you surround yourself with positivity, you will appear younger, more, more joyful, and that is part of age regression. Right. I hang out sometimes with people that are a lot younger than me. Mm -hmm. I have that youth around me. Mm -hmm. I forget I'm in my 30s sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a good or or bad thing, but but it's it's all about you. It's a lot about your mind. And I feel that ever since I, I started surrounding myself with maybe younger men... I started feeling younger about myself. Yeah, definitely. And... You know, it's it, it's it's all a mental thing. Yeah. I think that going back to like when is it too much? I, I'm the same way. I, I would I wouldn't say that I'm I d I would I don't judge people that, that do um I guess resort to more extreme treatments because again, it's all about what makes you happy. I will f- I will say though that I I worry with today's time because it's it's also just when when to stop and then when to start. Like I we see it in girls that are so young starting out with doing things like filler and that's where I think it's a little unnecessary. Dangerous. I would even say like in your twenties it's just not necessary. Um I understand the benefits of a lot of the stuff for anti aging reasons, but it's not really anti-aging if you're doing something to yourself in your early 20s or mid-20s. The, the things that women, that especially young girls need to understand, and one of the, uh, the most important things that you could do is apply uh, sunscreen. Mm-hmm. By the age, depending where you, you're, you're living, but th- by the age of 18, you've already done most of the sun damage mm-hmm. to your skin. And there's, it's extremely important to apply sunscreen. That is the one beauty secret I would give any girl. Mm-hmm. Apply sunscreen. It's not only when you think you're going to be out in the sun. It's every single day. Apply yeah. sunscreen. And take care of your skin. Drink like, lots of water. Take care of your skin Do, your, with your normal routine, right? With your you normal routine. You have to have a routine of taking care of your skin. Right. If you do these things, you don't need fillers. Right. If you get good facials every once in a while, you don't need fillers. Something- Everybody, you know what what the problem is? Mm-hmm. That we live in a society that it's all about instant gratification. Right. People want to see it right there and then. Right. I understand if you want to plump your lips, that's not going to happen by just, you know, you need a little help there. Yeah. But but here's the thing. Even with the lips, I see on... I'll see these pictures, you know, on Instagram, all these doctors have their own uh, social media page. And I'll see these pictures of, like, lips that look nice, right? But maybe one side is slightly 
uneven or bigger so they inject the other one just to make it like perfect you know it and it does end up looking really nice but that's what I mean it's like it starts to get to your head should I be doing something that would be like me I, I think I have nice lips but I actually do have uneven upper lips like one side is a little bit more full that would be like me saying just needing it so badly for them to be even and going and injecting my lip. Let me tell you, I when I see pictures of when I was younger, mm-hmm. I my lips were more full. Mm. They were. That is aging. Mm-hmm. Everything starts to fall. <laughs> that is it's just a reality. It's you you, you so just got to accept it. No, you, you got to accept it. But let me tell you, what did, what did you tell me the other day about how you found this place that they do facial massages. Yes. So this is the thing, like I'm dying to try this. And this is what I think I'm going to start doing next year is a lot of what women use filler for can actually be solved with microcurrent treatments, which is basically like doing, oh, I know what you're talking about. This is a little different. Okay. So the microcurrent though, it's, it's used with a device um, and it's, it's used, if you do it regularly, um, a lot of facialists believe that you won't need filler and Botox. But the one I'm th- that you're thinking of, and I told our friend about, I told Kristen about it too, is like downtown there's this place and it's kind of like facial exercise or exercises for your face that they teach you. And, and, and that made me think, a, that made me think a lot. We go to the gym, we work out our muscles. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, we've seen how, how girls can pretty much grow a butt yeah. off of lifting weights. Yeah. We, we gr- you know, we go to the gym, we work out our muscles, we're active. But no one thinks about it with the muscles on your face. Yeah, when your do you f- do that for your face? When you, when you smile a lot, for example, you create uh, smile wrinkles mm-hmm. because you're, you're activating that muscle a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you massage your face regularly, every time you wash your, your face, you remove your makeup, you, you, when you apply your moisturizer, if you're constantly massaging your face, you're, you're producing the collagen that you're losing throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really, it's all about go- coll- collagen reproduction. I want to go take a a class, but it's something that you know that you can also do at home mm-hmm. that you can incorporate in your in your routine. Because uh, let's 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 be serious. Uh, maybe some of our our uh, listeners can't afford to go get a, an expensive uh, yeah uh, treatment done, but that's something that you could do at home. Massage your face. Yeah, upwards, guys. Upwards. upwards. Everything, <laughs> remember, things are falling, so you have to pick it up. And I always do that with my chin. Yeah, oh, same. Always do it with my chin. Neck. And I don't, uh, I mean, with my neck. And I don't have, uh, thankfully, I don't have, um, I, know. I don't have the double chin <laughs> issue. I know. But I've been, every, I've been, do, I've been practicing it for years. Yeah, same. Whenever I apply my um, my face creams, I always massage upwards. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there are like YouTubes of, of how to kind of incorporate massages, into, massages your, yeah. into your routine as well. But uh, I thought it, we thought we thought it was a good topic to talk about because I'm curious to hear also what our listeners think. Um, when is it? too much like when and when that was also an acceptable time to start to start um but in terms of just like normal at home skincare i think you can you can start there you're never too young to really start that no that is never too young you should always already you know as a teen you should be already applying um a good face cream yeah and a lot of uh Sometimes I get asked, well, I can't afford this certain uh, face cream. Which one do you recommend, Mirtha? I can tell you, uh, there's, uh, there's this one company, and this is not an ad or anything like this, but it's, um, I think that they're still sold at CVS. Who? It's called Lumine, mm-hmm. and it's a vitamin C. Oh, yeah, you really like that. Yeah, I haven't used it in a very long time. 
But if you find a good vitamin C uh, um, cream moisturizer, a vitamin C based cream most likely will be a very good, uh, very good on your skin. Mm-hmm. It's all skin types and it rejuvenates your skin. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, I always recommend a vitamin C uh, moisturizer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's you know if it costs seventy dollars or if it costs five dollars. If it's vitamin C based, it's usually very good. Mm-hmm. But um. But yeah, I would love. I would. We would love to hear what you guys think about this. I think that yeah, this is a topic that we can touch back. Um, For sure. Again, I'm very curious to see who who um, who's already getting <laughs> getting things done. <laughs> Oh, okay, so every episode, we will leave you with a little self-empowerment booster tip that we use in our personal lives. They will be simple and straightforward. My personal booster I would like to share this week yes. is face masks. Mm. Since we're talking about beauty and we're talking about the pressures of aging, mm-hmm. I am a strong believer in face masks. I was told... Uh, Years ago, I was uh, I had I was I had a conversation with a Japanese man, and he said, and he was in the beauty industry, mm-hmm. and he told me that what he found very odd and but interesting about the U.S. was that face masks were used uh, sort of like a once in a blue kind of uh, thing, and. And I didn't understand what he meant by that. He's like, that in his country, in Japan, I think he was Japanese. He was Japanese or Korean, one or the other. In his country, women applied masks every single night. Mm -mm. Every single night. That was part of their routine. Mm -hmm. I like that. And when he told me that, it made sense. It's like, why should a face mask be only on Sundays or, or once a month? Or one day that you're having a sleepover with your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. No. Why not try to apply a face mask at least three, four times a week Mm -hmm. and see how your skin reacts to it? I started doing that. And let me tell you guys, I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So that's it for this episode of The Fourth Wave. Remember to try this at home. Start your day off by writing down three you things for you to check off during the day. And let us know if you tried any of it worked for you. You can get in touch with us. Martha is on Instagram at Martha Michelle. And I'm Jamie underscore Barada. Our email address is info at the ivywave.com. Send us your comments and feedback. Until next time, I'm Jamie Barada. And I'm Martha Michelle. Thanks for joining us.